Hi guys and welcome back to Lock Black Girl. Um, today we're going to be talking about women. Let me be more specific for you. Mm -hmm. The beauty standard for women. Now I'm going to do a separate um, episode for men. So just sit tight with that. Okay. But yeah, the beauty standard with women nowadays. Because, you know, back in the days, they really didn't care how you look because everybody was considered beautiful in their own way and stuff like that. But now it's like, oh, my God, I, I just don't know. Let me give you a little insight. OK, the ideal American standard of beauty is white, basically white, blue eyed, thin. In other words, skinny, very skinny, young. And it's like beauty norms that are narrow and unrealistic. That's what they like. Like. You know how um, some white women have slim waist, long torso, um, slim thighs, long legs. That's the standard. But most black women does most black women do not have a long torso, do not have a flat butt, do not have flat chest, do not have thin legs. You know, most of them be thick in all the right places. <laughs> But um, they're typically only reflective of white standards and lack diversity of all sizes, ages, skin shades, hair types, and body shapes. Let me give you a little more clarification on that, all right? Now, like I said, it's mostly white. So nowadays, black women or Chinese or Spanish or this and that, if you're not white, you're not the standard of beauty, basically. If you're not skinny, if your hair is not scraped and a certain color is not the standard. If your eyes are not blue, if your eyes are brown or, you know, black or something like that, it's not the standard. They don't consider it beautiful. Right? And like, age-wise, if you're not like, I'm trying to see, I'm going to say 20s and down. It's not considered a good age in the standard wise. But all ages, like I know y'all know. When black women be aging, baby, baby, they black does not crack. Cause oh my God. Black women are so beautiful. Like, you know how many black women I've seen was past the age of 40? Skin was clear, smooth. Baby, they had some butt on them, a uh, waist boobs i was like dang and i ain't gonna lie now i ain't gonna lie i do be looking when if you walk by me and you got a fat butt i'm gonna look simple as that i mean i'm not gay but i'll be admiring it because like dang mine ain't they be so i'm gonna look at yours simple yeah simple like if your skin clear or if you're really like really pretty i'm gonna i'm gonna i ain't gonna stare what's another word for stare i'm not gonna stare but I'm a glance, you know, give me a little couple of glances in because I want to see. All right. Now, some other, this ties in with insecurities also. Some other insecurities that us women, mostly black women, deal with are like, um, some white women deal with this too, most of the part, but being tall with big feet yes being tall with big feet sometimes we can't help that we tall baby sometimes it's just in our genes it's genetic okay um your daddy can be tall so that mean you probably gonna nine out of ten be tall you know what i'm saying or if your mama tall you get what i'm saying so we can't help that we tall that we six four and then and, and, and five ten and stuff shoot shoot we can't help that we wear a size freaking 10 and 11 okay we can't help that we was born like that. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like they need to normalize women having big feet and women being tall because being short with small feet is not a standard anymore. You get what I'm saying? Nowadays, you know how many tall girls it is out there. You know how many girls out there that would have big feet and they pull it off so well. You get what I'm saying? And me, I have kind of big feet. So I be insecure by my feet. But now I realize, baby, first of all, Y'all not buying my shoes. I am. Okay? Second of all, I don't care what y'all think. And another thing about big feet. 
I hate the way if you have big feet, your shoes be so, so much money. Like, if it's okay, compare a size 11 in women to a size 7 in women. You can go buy, especially when you buy a name brand shoe. So, you can go buy a Nike or a Jordan or something like that. And it'll be a good 100 or something. But if you're looking for a size 11 or 10 or, you know, it's going to be a good two or $300. Like, dang. Us big feet women need love, too. We don't want to spend all that money. Like, uh, that's just wrong. That, that's wrong. That is so wrong. That, that's wrong. Like, baby, because I showed on me one about no name brand shoes in my size. I mean, my feet not that big. It's every size for a woman. You know what I'm saying? But still, it's considered big. Still, to me. Now, another thing. Now, this is common. Very common. Sometimes it happens when you have a child. Or sometimes you're just born with it. Breast. Either you have big breasts or either your breasts sag. And most women... There's like, they have A cups and B cups and they sit up perky and all that. You know what I'm saying? And some people, they don't. You know, they just sag or hang or they're just too big. And we can't help that because the simple fact of it is we're born that way. You know what I'm saying? And most women be trying to hide it or um, they got methods out there. So if you don't want to wear a bra, you can use tape or stuff like that. I feel like, baby, I let them hang. I don't care. I Me, mean, I got saggy breasts. And you know what I do? I'm not finna do all that extra stuff so they can look pretty and stuff. They gonna hang, baby. For real, they gonna hang. They is gonna hang. If I wanna wear a heart to top or a tank top or one of them dresses that like, the dresses that be like having like the V in the middle, I think that's what it, when the, when the boobs showing on them. I can't explain it, but I, I can't explain it. I let mine hang, baby. I don't care because guess what? I'm beautiful in the skin I'm in. My breasts are beautiful. Okay? So, I let them hang. I'm not going to do all the extra extraordinary stuff. I don't even like wearing, um, what they call, the bras with the wires in them. Um, I don't know what the wire bras, I guess that's what they're called. I don't like wearing those. I don't like wearing push-up bras because it hurts my back. And it also hurts. Like, it'd be too tight around the sides. And plus, the scraps at the top hurt, too. So, I know that some of y'all be out there with big breasts and all that be uncomfortable with those bras baby i just let mine hang or you know what i do mine not very big but they do hang so i go to the um store baby and i get me either is that called sports bras training bras i think that's what they call that's what i wear on a daily basis i wear those i only wear a push-up bra when need be and that's rarely i'm not gonna do all that and i'm not gonna keep hurting myself and putting my back through all that pain when I don't have to. I let them hang freely. Simple as that. Now, another thing, this is something I deal with. I don't know how many people out there deal with it. Ears. The standard for ears is small, right? Baby, my ears is, they nowhere near small. Now, I looked at my baby picture one time. My head was very big. But my ears stuck out more because they was just too big for my head. But now I grow into them, so you really can't tell or you really don't notice until I actually just sit there and show you. Mine don't poke out, but they're extra big. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they have theirs to where they're big and they poke out. And I feel like, even though it's not the standard in society right now, I feel like, to me, they're very beautiful and it brings out your face more. It enhances it. And it'd be so cute. I love seeing people with big ears that poke out. It'd be so freaking cute. I don't know. It's adorable. I don't know why. Mine, though, I have like regular smegular ears that's just flapping big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember people used to play with my ears and, you know, make them flap and stuff. They used to be so embarrassing. But now, baby, I embrace some. I used to do not want to wear no styles where my ears was going to show like ponytails or, um, you know, the scab braids when you get it into a ponytail. When your mama gets you some box braids, put it in a ponytail. Or when you get like, when you have natural hair and it's in a, a puff and your ears and stuff showing. I never want to wear my hair like none of that. I always kept my hair braided and I always kept my hair like 
down and i always made sure it was long so it covered my ears because i hated my ears but now i'm starting to love them because like i can hear everything mm -hmm. so girls out there with big ears mm -hmm. yeah um who can hear good we can hear like dogs yep i can hear from a mile away mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and that brings me to the eyes if you wear glasses even though it's not the standard to them it's beautiful you're beautiful with your glasses i did not like mine at first because i used to get the grandma ones you know when your mama picking out your glasses and they your grandma glasses yeah but once i started picking them on myself baby oh you couldn't tell me nothing i wear my glasses faithfully every day now i wear contacts too but sometimes them get aggravating so i put on my glasses and i'll be like you know what i should appreciate myself more appreciate my glasses more you know what i'm saying and the girls out there that wear glasses and they can't see for real Y'all know that we have to pick a big frame to where if you pick a thin frame, you know, your and you can't see and you have a lot of medicine, you know, them things, are gonna, your lens is going to be thick. So, baby, pick them, pick the big, pick the big ones. That's what I started doing. I picked the big ones. I, yeah, that's what I do. I picked the big ones. And they, and they cute. They cute. Period. But now, look, if I can't see you, I can't hear you. All right. Don't ask me how. I don't know the science behind it. It's just facts. Okay. All right. All right. Here go one I know everyone deals with, not just black women. Scratch marks. Ooh, scratch marks. Now, you don't necessarily get those when you're just pregnant. Some people get them when they lose weight or gain weight. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I have scratch marks because I have lost weight, gained weight, lost weight. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, they just there. Like, sometimes they're brighter than your skin. They're stripes and they're brighter than your skin or sometimes they're darker than your skin and i'm learning you know what embrace them love them that's a part of you you know what i'm saying it's a part of you embrace it they're beautiful they're really beautiful i love scratch marks because baby i'd be looking at myself in the mirror like oh mm, you look good girl mm -hmm. you look so good so good embrace them scratch marks girl you better embrace them scratch marks okay all right. Like I was saying earlier, thick thighs are like thick thighs or like if your stomach is a little bigger than the usual, like stomach fat or something like that, um, rolls in your back or like big arms or I ain't gonna say big arms. I'm gonna just say arms with a little flap, you know, um, or big boobs or big butts. It's not the standard, you know what I'm saying? But hey, oh, well. Forget the standard. Throw it out the window. We making a new standard. Period. It's 2023. We're making a new standard. Okay? If you have a big butt, or if you have a big stomach, or if you have those flappy arms and thick thighs and all that, throw out that beauty standard from long ago and make your own. Embrace your curves. Embrace your fat. Embrace all of that. Embrace your back rows. Because, baby, I embrace my back rows. Mm-hmm. Sure do. I be in the mirror just playing with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I even got names for them. Yep. Embrace your rows. It's nothing wrong with a little bit of stomach fat. It's nothing wrong with thick thighs. It's nothing wrong with having a butt or boobs. Okay? Okay? God made us and he put us in the skin that we're in. So that means we should love it. Forget what everybody else is saying. Forget all the standards. All that. Okay? Okay. Now, look. And for the girls out there with the flappy arms, I love you. Because that means you can cook real good. And baby, I love me a good meal. Especially those black women out there with the flappy arms and the big bellies. That mean y'all cook real good soul food. Yeah. I'm coming to y'all house. That mean y'all cook real good soul food. Okay, um, next. Oh, this is one I have. I'm still having trouble with this one. I still ain't get the, I'm starting, but I'm getting the hang of it, but I, Having a perfect smile, perfect tease. You know what I'm saying? Me, I, I'm, I'm admit, I'm, in, I'm going to admit, I'm going to admit, my smile is not perfect. I have an overbite, and my two front teeth are kind of big. So, yeah. And let me tell you why. When I was little, I stopped recently in high school. I know it's just something that I, I used to help cope. You know, it helped me cope with stuff and. 
yeah i used to suck my thumb i know it's a lot of y'all that used to suck your thumb i still do suck your thumb it's okay baby it's going to get better i don't know when i decided to break the habit um I don't know how I, I decided to break the habit. I just know one day I stopped and never did it again. And then recently I tried to um suck my thumb again. I was like, ew, this is so disgusting. You know what I'm saying? So it was a habit for me. And it helped me cope with certain stuff. And I don't know. I just stopped one day. But yeah, that's how come my teeth are not perfect. And I was like, I want to get braces. I really do. But I'm like, I need to learn how to love my smile and love myself with the smile before I try to fix it. Because you're supposed to love yourself when you're down. Love yourself when you think you're ugly. Love yourself when, you know, at your worst before you can get at your best. So I try to embrace my smile more now. Keyword try. Yes, I try one day at a time. You know, never too late. Yeah, I try to embrace it as much as I can because... Some days I feel pretty with it and some days I don't. And so I just be sitting there like, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm learning to love it one day at a time. It kind of messes with my speech too. So when I say some S words, that's why you hear this. Because, <laughs> because of my teeth. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this one right here baby it's a story time into this when you have short hair or if you, you or if you have no hair like some girls they cut their hair off because you know hair can hold so much trauma so much pain and they cut it off to start all the way over or sometimes they just cut it off because they want to try something new okay well or if you have short hair and they think the standard is long hair straight hair all that baby it's okay to wear your fro you better embrace that fro, baby. Power to the black people. Embrace that flow. I mean, not flow. Fro. My dad. Embrace it. Because I used to hate my fro in middle school. I remember my mama cut my hair off. Because it was damaged. And I had used to get permed a lot. And you know how everybody say, mostly black, well, all black people always used to say, well, my hair used to be good and long before my mama started giving me perms and texturizers. Yes, that was true. For every black person that you heard say that, it was true, okay? So listen, she started giving me the perms and stuff. And my granny, she used to put rubber bands in my head. She claimed it was for the grow, but I think she was lying to me. Because my hair, I ain't had no hair. And it wouldn't grow. So my mama, she was like in middle school, she cut it off. And I didn't help. I didn't help. I have no hair. I'm sorry, guys. I need a minute. I didn't have any hair. Okay, after she cut it off, like, she cut it off real, real short. You would think I would have got... You know how when you see your son or, like, your boyfriend or something to their um, barbershop and they get a low cut with a fade? That's what I had, but minus the fade. I had a low cut. When I put a headband on, bro, it wouldn't even go into a front. I mean, a, like a little puff. It was just a small little fro. I didn't have no hair. And then she had the nerve to dye it red. And I was sitting there like, oh, my God. And then it wasn't even red for real. It was actually orange. It was orange. Not red. Okay. Yeah. And it, you know how long it took for it to go back? Like, I got it cut in middle school. I don't remember what grade. And it didn't start growing till I got in high school to like my junior year. I'm going to say that's when I started really wearing it because when she first cut it, I always kept it done in box braids or something like that or twist because I'm like, I'm not going to wear this short fro had me looking like a little boy. And no, I'm not wearing it out in public. So I used to have it done all the time. And once I got in high school in my junior year, that's when I decided, you know what, let me take my hair down and see how much it's grow. And y'all, it grows to where I could put it in a puff. And I was like, yes, I'm one of them. I'm wearing a puff, period. Yes, period. Yeah. And I was wearing that fro ever since. Ever since a year, until a year ago. Yes, that's when I got locked. Yes, I got locked a year ago. Best decision ever. Oh, yeah. And if you out there with locks and you on your starter phase, baby, Keep pushing because your hair going to start to look good when it lock and when it grow and when they drop. Because, baby, my hair was barely touching my ears when I first got locked. And when I tell you my hair is down to my neck now, 
baby, you would be surprised if you wait. And it's been a year. It's been a year. Go check out my lock page if you want to see that, okay? Now, last but not least, this one is a sore subject for me because I deal with it. And I know a lot of people out there deal with it. Eczema. Having eczema. The beauty standard nowadays is you have to have clear skin, no acne, no eczema, none of that. But it's okay to have eczema. You know what I'm saying? It's not... It's not nothing life changing. It's not nothing life threatening. Okay, it's ways you can fix it. Natural ways to fix it. Me, um, I dealt with eczema my whole life, basically, in different parts of my body. It's like you can have it anywhere: your face, legs, arms, stomach, butt, all that. You can have it anywhere. It just depends on how you take care of it. Now, at first, I used to go to the doctor for it to, you know, get them to help me. But I realized once I got older that they not making it any better. You know what I'm saying? And so I just took matters in my own hand. So for the girls out there with eczema, baby, embrace your eczema. You know what I'm saying? Well, I didn't. I never used to like wearing shorts or nothing because my eczema was on my legs. And I always used to be scared to wear it because I'm like, people going to think it's nasty or something like that. But once I got older, I realized, baby, I'm going to embrace my eczema. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to embrace it because this is the skin God gave me. I'm going to love the skin that I'm in. So I started embracing it. And right now, if you out there with eczema, baby, let me tell you what to do. I use shea butter because it's all natural. It moisturizes you real good. keeps you shiny and feeling nice. So if you out there with eczema, baby, stop using that stuff from the stove, that lotion and stuff from your dermatologist, baby. Use you some natural stuff, natural oils, natural, you know, lotions and herbs and stuff and all that good stuff right there. And it's also in a way that you eat. But me, baby, I eat anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, that's the end of this um episode. Let me know in the comments or something how y'all liked it, okay? Thank y'all for listening. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Lock Black Girl, where we talked about the beauty standard for women nowadays. Let me know how y'all feel about this episode. And if you want me to do a part two on men in the comments or on any of my social media, you can follow me on any social media at Lock Black Girl. And do not forget to like, rate, and comment on any podcast app. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. It meant a lot to me. Until next time.